It has been cited throughout the Philippine economy that when the United States military had been operating in the archipelago country, they were embedded as a huge part of the economy. Economists estimated that around the mid-1990s, just before the complete exit of the United States military in the Philippines, the economic contribution of all the U.S. military bases, troop deployments, local labor employment, and domestic demand produced were contributing at least 5% to the total GDP of the Philippines. Since its disappearance, however, it has all but disappeared. But a decade or so later, they would yet again return to the Philippines. This time, they will be under a new established agreement known as the Enhanced Defense Cooperation, an agreement signed in 2014 that allows the United States to build and operate facilities on Philippine bases for both American and Philippine forces. The return, however, may have been intensified due to the rising challenges led by China's rising claims in the South China Sea. The return of the U.S. military, however, regardless of its intentions, would yet again benefit the country's economy once again. But here's the issue about hosting the U.S. military. What we often know and understand about them is their direct economic benefits. Sure, their troop deployments can bring a number of benefits to the economy. However, one of the most ignored factors about U.S. troop deployment in its host nation is its negative impacts. This is a very crucial topic, simply because it is often ignored by the media, lawmakers, and the general public. We simply cannot imply that all they bring about to a country are benefits. Security provisions, the increase of local labor employment, and agricultural production demand can be good things. But we must not forget about the other side of the coin. Negative impacts of U.S. troop deployment in host nations have been argued several times, not just in the Philippines, but all around the world. A lot of people can lay claim to the basic principles about the negative impacts, such as false security, political interruption, rise in property taxes, and inflation around the surrounding areas that the U.S. military bases are positioned in. But let us not dive into the basic summary, and instead dive into more lengthy research, starting with an article published in 2015. 15 by the nation.com states that the effects of U.S. military deployment in foreign lands are generally harmful. The authors of the article have claimed that there are actually only short-term benefits that are being done through the construction of military bases, which shortly increases capital investments and employment. The short-term economic benefits, however, ignore the long-term negative impacts. The long-term view, according to the article, includes the opportunity cost of the land offered to the U.S. military bases, environmental damages due to the dumping of hazardous materials, U.S. soldiers resorting to violence, and the common proliferation of prostitution rising near the U.S. bases, which have become common around the world, and so is the case for the Philippines. A further emphasis was pointed out on the fact that the U.S. troops tend to have significant cultural differences, which, if a crime is committed, may tarnish the image of the United States in general and the bilateral relationship shared between the host nation. Generally, there have been a number of atrocious crimes committed by these U.S. soldiers in the Philippines, and we will not mention any of these here, but you can go ahead and Google them as they are quick to find. The general view on how U.S. military bases are not even limited to these cultural differences, we can apply it to the entire general view of the Philippines. First of all, we may be able to see that many Filipinos are being directly employed by these U.S. military bases back when they were at large large in the country, and even right now as they come back. However, it is also evident that the lands used by these U.S. military bases can have indeed produced somewhat of an opportunity cost to the Philippines. When the U.S. military was occupying parts of the Subic Bay, it was all but used as storage for military equipment, training of U.S. personnel, and most importantly, the functions of a military shipyard. Yet, as soon as they left Subic Bay, it was transformed into what is known today, a scale that is understood as the Subic Freeport Zone which is well regarded as one of the largest recipients of foreign investments. Had the U.S. military stayed in the Subic Bay area, it could be more than likely the Freeport Zone would not exist, and maybe companies such as Hanjin Subic Shipyard would not have come into the country and invested. 
Another negative view of U.S. military bases in the Philippines is the environment. This is arguably the most devastating impact of having U.S. troops in the country. An article published by the Stars and Stripes states that even after the U.S. military had disappeared, its fuel pollution related to the operations done by the U.S. military. The article further stated that both Air Force and Navy polluted the Philippines haphazardly, and a Senate study in 2000 has even linked the toxins to not just environmental damages, but human-related damages. A study published in 1992 by the General Accounting Office stated that the U.S. Navy pumped 3.75 million gallons of untreated sewage every day into the local fishing and swimming water of Subic Bay. Harming the water environment of Subic Bay may have caused caused long-term damage to the lives of fishermen, but also to the entire fishing industry of the Philippines. And unfortunately, nobody, or rather most of this recorded information, has all been forgotten. Now, the negative impacts of U.S. military bases, as stated by a number of factual research, are devastating. But before we do a 360-degree turn and have differing views about the U.S. military's actual economic impact on the Philippines, we must first weigh whether it is actually good for the entire Philippine economy or whether it is actually bad for them. In other words, the government should understand the good and bad things about the U.S. military. Well, presumably they must have done their research considering the amount of information regarding the environmental impact. And yes, there is some other research and information out there that have more detrimental impacts on the host nation occupied by the U.S. military. Detrimental impacts such as anti-U.S. sentiment rising, as stated in a study published in the Journal of African and Asian Studies and further on this research, says that the relationship sentiment may aggravate the relationship between the United States and the host nation, causing the volume of trade between the two to fall. What other issues are there related to the U.S. military, you ask? Well, aside from what we mentioned, we'd love to hear what you think in the comments. But before that, let us still clear one important factor. A factor that even if the negative very much outweighs the positives, which we don't know whether it actually does or does not, the U.S. military has still and most likely has occupied and will continue to occupy parts of the Philippines, much like how they did in almost all of its allies solely because the Philippines was once under a colonial occupation of the U.S. Hence, we really can't do anything. Further, due to presumably the rising tensions with China, the U.S. is more persistent than ever to return to the Philippines, and as a country with minimal defenses, they have no other options but to turn to their former ally. Moreover, while we have also noted a ton of negative impacts of the U.S. troop deployments in the archipelago country, we have also provided ample information about its positive impacts. There are obviously a ton of studies about the economic benefits of U.S. troop deployments in its host nation. For a very quick summary of what they may be like in the Philippines, an article published in 1989 can tell us. An article titled, The Economics of U.S. Military Bases in the Philippines, shows how much in millions of dollars the U.S. military spends on its bases in the Philippines. It is shown that in 1985, the U.S. Air Force had spent $17.9 million in contracts with local construction companies, $17 million for local material procurement and local service contracts, and a further $19.9 million for Filipino workers. The U.S. Navy, on the other hand, had spent more than the U.S. Air Force in the same year, showing figures that the U.S. military spent about $60 million on Filipino workers and $50.8 million on local construction companies. Both the U.S. Navy and Air Force spent $380 million in 1985 on their military bases in the Philippines. This $100 million spending in the Philippines is, do take note, only in one single year. But anyway, whether it has a positive or negative impact on the Philippines' local communities or the economy in general, it may already be unfortunate to return things to where it was before. For an occurrence that happened decades back, one can simply either be happy due to its economic benefits or be sad due to its damages. Do let us know, however, what you think. Do you think that the U.S. military deployments were good for the Philippines or was it bad? Thanks for watching.